Hello and welcome to a short video summary of the Sony KD65A1. You can read the actual review via the link in the description or by clicking the card at the top right of the video. The A1 is Sony's flagship OLED TV for 2017. In fact, it's their first OLED TV. Now the panel is provided by a third party, but otherwise this is pure Sony. If you look at the design of this TV, it's got that classic minimalist contemporary design that we associate with Sony. Um, from the front, all you're gonna see is a screen. One great big 65 inch screen. Why is this? Because this TV uses what Sony called an acoustic surface. This is an inspired idea from Sony. What they're actually doing is using the screen itself as the speaker. So if you go to the rear of the TV and look at the back panel, you'll see that there is a stand that supports the TV, but built into this stand is also a subwoofer for the, for the base, for the lower frequencies, and attached to the rear of the panel itself, there are actuators on both the left-hand side and the right-hand side. There are two actuators on each side, in fact, and these literally vibrate the screen, turning the screen into a speaker. That's how it creates the sound. It's a really clever idea and it works really well. This is a great sounding TV. Obviously the sound emanates from the image itself, which means that dialogue is focused right on the characters talking, but it really does sound good. It fills the room, it can go really loud without distorting. It's got good bass. It's a fantastic sounding TV. Great idea from Sony. Surprise it hasn't been done before, but maybe you needed a, an OLED panel to do it. Um, apart from that, as I say, the design is, is stylish and minimalist in appearance. All you see from the front is the screen. At the rear, you can see that there's a glossy black rear to the panel itself. There's the actuators. There's the stand. The stand is attached at the top and it's hinged. So basically, you can either have it open and lock it open to support the TV if you're standing it on a, on a surface of some sort, or you can lock it in flat against the rear of the panel, attach a bracket to a visa bracket, and then warm out the TV. So you have options there. Now, although the TV itself is very well made and it's beautifully designed, um, one thing lets it down slightly is the remote control because it's still the same basic remote control that you find on any of Sony's TVs. Um, it has a rubberized surface which some people don't like and the buttons can be quite difficult to find, um, particularly in the dark. Um, it's, it's okay, it does the job, everything you need is there, but you just think with a, with a flagship t TV like this, you'd want uh, a more high-end remote control to go with it. In terms of its smart platform, it, of course it uses Android um, and um, like all the Android platforms we've seen so far, it has its good points, it has its bad points. It's quite well laid out now. You can go down through the various options and then move across the tiles to select what you want. It has all the, the video on demand services you'd expect, like uh, Amazon and Netflix and YouTube. It has UView as well, so you can access all of these catch up um, services. But it's still a little bit uh, buggy. We did have a couple of crashes. Um, we'd like to see it being more stable. There is a major update coming later in the year. Um, it's going to be updated to Android 7 to Nougat, so that will be uh, that should hopefully improve things considerably. But at the moment, it, it's still a little bit buggy. The input lag measurements were a bit of a mixed bag. Um, with the 1080p signal, we measured it at 47 milliseconds, regardless of whether it was SDR or HDR, which is a little bit high for serious gamers, but probably fine for most people. However, with a 4K signal, it was nearer 29 milliseconds, which is a lot better. That's both for either SDR or HDR. So good news if you game in 4K. In terms of the picture quality, well, this TV uses an Ultra HD 4K OLED panel, and it um, has wider color gamut support. We measured it at about 71% of Rep 2020, which equates to about 96 to 98% of DCI, DCI P3. And uh, it also supports high dynamic range. At the moment, it supports HDR10, but it will support Dolby Vision and hybrid log gamma HLG later in the year. That will be added with a firmware update when Sony also update to Android 7. In terms of its out-of-the-box performance, this TV was pretty good. There was a little bit too much blue in the grayscale, but a pretty accurate gamma. And um, the TV concludes both a 2 and a 10-point white balance control, so it was easy to get a very accurate grayscale and a nice accurate gamma as well. In terms of the color performance, um, out of the box, it was pretty good apart from a slight skew caused by the grayscale. Once we calibrated the grayscale, we had a really accurate color performance with really good tracking apart from a slight error in the hue of magenta, but that wasn't visible with actual viewing material. Uh, in terms of HDR, as I say, good color, good color gam gamut coverage for Rep 2020 and DCI P3. And we also measured uh, peak brightness at about 650 nits, which isn't the highest we've measured on OLED, but certainly that's reasonably good for an OLED and, and in a nice accurate picture mode as well. Certainly it tracked the uh, PQ EOTF very accurately. And as you can see, the grayscale was nice and, and even as well. Good performance there. Curl tracking against Rep 2020 was pretty good and very good against DCI P3 within the limitations of the actual native color gamut. So overall, great HDR performance in terms of the test measurements. Actually, in terms of watching the TV, 
fantastic image. I mean, this is an OLED TV, of course, so you've got the deep blacks and the great shadow detail. Much better performance just above black than we've seen in previous years. So Sony have been doing something really good there. The motion handling is excellent, um, as we'd expect from a Sony TV. And also the video processing is really good too. So you've got natural colors, um, good grayscale performance, great image. I mean, with SDR content, the, the, the image was absolutely spectacular. Um, when it came to HDR content, still really good. You've got the, you know, the nice accurate colors, the more saturated color gamut there. You've got um, really precise specular highlights because obviously it's an OLED and it's self-emitting. Um, not quite as bright and punchy as you get from an LCD, but, uh, but overall still a really, really good uh, HDR image. And obviously with the 4K, you get bags of detail in that image. It's a really, really good performing TV. We were very impressed with it. When you consider you've got the performance in terms of picture quality, you've got great sound from the acoustic surface, you've got a beautiful design, really great build quality. It is a stonking television from Sony. Uh, and now it's not cheap, it's, you're going to pay £5,000 for the 65 inch A1, but I think more than worth it in most respects. And I definitely think it's worthy of an AV Forum's highly recommended badge. Um, don't forget, you can see more videos like this at avforums.com, Europe's largest site for home entertainment, for movies, tech, and other news, articles, videos, and podcasts. Thanks for watching.